praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to greet you all today in Jesus' name. I welcome you today in the analysis. As you join me, the good Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, both new subscribers, old, I welcome you all. I greet you all in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Join me now as you go in the analysis concerning marriage series that will do with sex in marriages. Praise the Lord. Sex in marriage. So, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we read again from verse 1. Now, concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife had no power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also, the husband had no power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Praise the Lord. Bible here and giving us the formula. What we should do, what should transpire, what should happen between husband and wife, married couples. Listen to me, sex is meant for married couples, men and women, husband and wife who are married, who are male and female adults who are in love who are in marriage. That's who sex is meant for. Not for boys and girls, as it is nowadays all over the world. It's rampant, and they call it dating. Even married men and women that will lead their wife and husband, and for other men and for other women, they call it dating. They are dating. Well, the Bible says, and that is illegal. So it should not happen. Don't defraud your husband. Don't defraud your wife. Your bodies. The husband owns the body or the wife. The wife owns the body or the husband. Render each other their due benevolence. It is actually you are doing your husband good. You're doing your wife good when you surrender yourselves in love, making as husband and wife. Praise the Lord. Anything else that is sexual abuse that God frowned at, the word God condemned. That's why he said it's not good that a man should touch a woman if it's possible. It's not good that a man should touch a woman, but to avoid fornication. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, every woman have her own husband. Render each other their conjugal rights. Even if you want to do it ten times, the only time they have the strength and stamina to do so, go ahead. It is legal. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. Sex is ordained of God. It was so coming to be at the Garden of Eden when God said to Adam and his wife, be fruitful and multiply. How can they be fruitful and multiply without sexual intercourse? Without male organ, female organ coming in contact? That how coming to be. It is scriptural that a man should touch his wife, woman 
husband touch, a husband sleep together, have sex. And by so doing, you procreate. It's divinely ordained. It is compulsory for married couples. Praise the Lord. It is not meant for married people. It is meant for married couples. Everything God created has male and female. And uh, I want to tell you sometimes, uh, it don't used to be easy for female folk to surrender themselves. Sometimes they're beaten by the brown and by, uh, you know, doing some preambles. But you know that sometimes some people give excuses. Husband will say, oh, I'm tired. The wife will say, oh, I'm tired. Or do you know that this place, that would not even permit excuse. He says that if you are told there are going to be an excuse, let it be you want to give yourself to prayer and fasting. After you finish praying and fasting, come together again so that the devil will not tempt you. Listen to me. Once married, is forever married. There's other kind of uh, 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 sexual intercourse that is illegal though. Between Nowadays, we see even husband, uh, uh, fathers sleep with their own daughters, mothers sleep with their own sons, brothers sleep with their own sisters, sisters with their own brothers, which is illegal, illegitimate. It's an incest. God condemn it. And don't be another Lord and his daughters. Lord, daughters force Lord to commit incest because they believe that no man will come to marry them. And they made their father drunk. And they save their fathers and have children by their fathers. But today we have people who consciously committing incest, sleeping with the people they honor to sleep with, blood relations. Do you know it causes uh, sickness? If it causes it, God, well, God forbid, God forbid, unless, you know, that's why when I'm not wanting to rape Tema. Tema said, talk to the king. He will give you, he will give you, me, a marriage. But the man was not listening to that. And he committed that sex with his half-sister and that led to his death. His brother and also the, sister, the brother of the sister, Tema killed him. That's you. How it is. It is in though the immoral sex is met with judgment, punishment by death. But today, though you, many people are abusing it and they go about with it, they are still alive. But even if you escape immediate judgment now, you can escape it in eternity. When you are alive, expire upon and you will have no power to live forever in this world. Now you are alive if you are involved in immoral sex and many ways. Praise the Lord. Amen before it's too late. So, husband, render your wife, your body. Wife, render to your husband, your body. You are, you are not one of it. Both of you own each other for godly pleasure. It's for godly pleasure, godly enjoyment, and so God made to be. So, I want to, you to join me next time as you continue. The Lord bless you. Join me in Esther. Praise the Lord.